Welcome to another episode of Strange Days Live at our new time, 9.30-ish p.m. on this Thursday, March 7, 2024. We're trying to integrate our show here with another show that runs uh, right um, up to the 9.30-ish hour. That's where we kind of switched it up a little bit so we can get more uh, callers coming in from that show to this show. Uh, we're kind of in the initial stages, so hopefully it works tonight. For all of us joining us, welcome to the show again. This is your host, Doc, at Straight Days Live. Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, hey, Brad, how are you, buddy? Good to have you here. I'm just saying hi to some of the callers that are on. Um, and thank you for joining us. We're trying out, uh, trying out new things just to kind of draw in more, more listeners, if you will. Uh, let me get this theory going. So I hope you guys are doing well. It's um, very rainy today here for some reason, uh, which I enjoyed it. We had um, we had thunderstorms in the in the, this part of California. Um, I'm gonna put you on a brief hold, guys, before I go on. So we are trying something uh, new. Hey, Chin Chi, how are you, buddy? Good to have you here. All right, guys, so it is that we're, a tr- we're trying out uh, new things today. So um, I'm incorporating myself with a, with a Spanish, there's a Spanish speaking show that airs uh, a few hours before, well, it airs actually from eight o'clock p.m. Pacific time to 9:30 ish, and that show just concluded. And so most of the listeners from that show are obviously it's a Spanish-speaking show, uh, but uh, most of them are English speakers as well. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to combine. So I take the English portion speaker left over from the from from the show, if you will, and we want to plan to do in July if this works out. We want to plan. Uh, we're planning to do. A combined live experience uh, here in Southern California, in which fans from both shows will be able to attend, and then we'll be able to do a live show, which I think will be kind of cool to do something like that. Yeah, that way, you guys get to meet us, and you, we get to meet you face to face. I know a lot of listeners are, are um, not from the LA area, but uh, some of them are, and so as these things grow, you try to experiment with different experiences, if you will. So a live in call experience will be uh will be pretty cool all right um anyway so good to have you on the show for for those of us who are transfer listeners from miedoscope you guys can uh click on the link that's been placed i'm going to replace it here again i'm going to place a link here that you guys can click on and then you guys can call the show or come in the show and then by tomorrow i should have all the software updated in which i can take a physical call if you will uh and the physical call will be directed right into the show with a better quality if you will but right now what i do is you're welcome to call the show physically with the same number as always the 951-888-0313 okay and then uh, i usually kind of hold up the mic close enough to to the mic from the phone i hold it close enough to the mic that I used to speak with, and and that's the best way that I can get you guys going. But I'm implementing some new software to see that the call quality will come in uh, improved and better. Anyways, with that being said, I don't have too much planned for today because I thought the transition would be a a smooth transition, uh, which means it will be a lot of calls coming in right away, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing the, the turnaround that we hope for. Well, anyways, it's a work in progress. We'll give it a, a shot perhaps tomorrow. But uh, for the meantime, uh, for the listeners that are here, I just uh, invite you to to come on in if you guys want to chat with me or if you want to ask questions in the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. In the comment section so we can uh, get something going. Otherwise, uh, did you guys watch the State of the Union? What was your thoughts on it? Today I watched a little bit of it, fell asleep, and I thought that uh, our president was pretty spot on, man. 
I know he gets a lot of slack for uh, forgetfulness or, you know, mental sharpness, if you will. But uh, he did a great job from, from the, I watched about 10, 10, 10, 10 or 15 minutes of the of the um, State of the Union. And um, I was impressed. He's uh, he's still pretty sharp. He gets, uh, I guess he gets a bomb deal. I didn't particularly vote for him. And, um, but that doesn't mean that I have to, um, you know, I have to be, uh, I have to remain, uh, how would you say, impartial. And I thought that he did a good job. So we'll just see. We had some California elections uh, on Tuesday. And uh, other than that, politics is politics. The same thing, same same as always. If you guys follow, if you guys follow the Twitter uh, UFO community, there have been some couple of crazy things coming. There, there's a lot of uh, there's there's always call about the disclosure, and there's always people that are discussing it in regards to the government uh, being able to quote unquote uh, reveal to public the truth behind uh, technology and um, the disclosure that. There are entities that do exist, but uh, lately, if people that have been not only in the community for a while, but are kind of vetted into being the legitimate the things, have uh, disclosed uh, some important things. There's a guy that I follow. I don't know if you're familiar with Lou Elizondo, uh, and he uh, posted a a message on Twitter yesterday. That read the following: "said Friends, it's always most quiet before the storm. There's no going back." Some members of Congress finally know what's going on. Some officials in the executive branch are scrambling. Efforts are underway below the wave tops. The results of which will break the surface and reveal themselves at a time of our choosing. It's going to be an interesting year for those who continue to obfuscate. We are hard at work for you. And then uh, there's another gentleman that uh, that I follow, uh, Jimmy Corbell, well, that's basically in the same cap as Lou Lozano. So it seems to me that uh, that they are going to be able, or something's going to go down in the next few months in regards to disclosure, if you will. And the other thing that's pretty uh, strange, if you will, there's um, a boxer called, his name is Ryan Garcia. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ryan Garcia. He's a young guy, he's 25 years old. Pretty much of a prodigy as far as boxing is, is concerned. I think his record's like 25 and 1. But recently, he's been, uh, his demeanor has changed from his usual demeanor of um, as a person. You know, he's po- he's posting a lot of cryptic and weird things on his uh, Twitter account. And um, some of the things that he's been posting are, are very uh, disturbing, to say the least. He's been, uh, you know, he's been quoted at, quoted as saying that he was actually in attendance at um, Bohemian Grove, which is uh, a, sort of a camp, a camp ground in Northern California that's very secluded for membership and admission. You know, people of government uh, have been known to to partake in ceremonies. People that are very wealthy, people that are very influential, and uh, you know, this this thing's been going on for many many years. And there's many theories around there on what Bohemian Grove could be, and nothing really has been set in stone. But uh, according to to Ryan Garcia, uh, he says that uh, he was abducted by elites the elite quote unquote and the elite would qualify as anybody being a member uh, there's my friend me let's go hey buddy how are you we i was just uh i'm gonna get a sideline here i was explaining to my fans that we're gonna do that transition from from your show to my show but um i think we <laughs> We gotta plan it better. Uh, tomorrow, before you go off the air, we'll, we'll uh, I'll talk to you um, just to do a, a smoother transition from from your show to mine. 
but uh, yeah, uh, and so in regards to to Bohemian Grove, right? Uh, and this gentleman named Ryan Garcia, he says that he uh, he was abducted uh, by uh, members of, of of the club. Take that as you know, take that as you will. And so when he was abducted and brought into this facility, he was uh, able to witness a lot of uh, disgusting acts. I'm not gonna go on. I'm not gonna go on. I'm not gonna describe the acts because you. It's pretty. It's a pretty recent news, and you guys can actually research it on your own. But somehow Ryan uh, Garcia was able to record some of the things that were taking place uh, when he was, uh, you know, quote unquote abducted. So he's been saying recently that he's been told to keep quiet about it to sort of change his tone, to be less vocal, but he's very adamant. Uh, he, he's a, he claims that, well, he's a Christian man. And so he's telling people that he's not afraid of anything, that uh, God has protected him and that he will be disclosing the videos and exposing what goes on in Bohemian Grove to the mainstream uh, public, if you will. And so that's been kind of going for the last few days and it's, it's very interesting um so yeah he's been kind of recap the story but making serious accusations on twitter about bohemian grove again it's a place that exists in the north of san francisco with many urban legends surrounding it there's some videos online uh, about people that have actually infiltrated the bohemian grove itself but uh, not when it's in function if you will Think, think of Bohemian Grove as a festival that takes place, I believe, once a year. Okay, so whenever the festival is taking place, obviously it's very restricted for anybody to sneak in and gain access. But during the off times when there's nothing going on, uh, security is maybe less less strict, and thus they're able to people are able to infiltrate. So, you know, we have Coachella Festival here in Southern California. So, you know, it, it, it's easier to sneak into the Coachella campgrounds when the festival is not going on than it is when the festival is going on. So th there's YouTube videos of people that have actually sneaked into the premises when it's off season or when there's nothing going on and they're able to film. There's a particularly a stage, if you will, in the center. Uh, Think about it uh, as an amphitheater type uh, scenery. There, you have an amphitheater, you have a lake in between, and then you have um, the stage. And there's a huge statue of an owl. So, if you look at the YouTube uh, channels, it's very interesting because they they detail the structure and they kind of detail everything. So they give you a, a visitor's eye view of of what a Bohemian Grove looks like. But then there's people like Alex Jones, which was was able to sneak into the active part of the bohemian grove when it was um when they were going through the ritual and he actually recorded this and that's readily available in youtube and sounds like they're doing some sort of plays uh you know people are um it's very mysterious but uh, you, you can see the alex jones video and and you can get out of get out of it whatever whatever you 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 will there are some ritualistic things happening in the in the video that was recorded by Alex Jones, but nothing you know that was either identifiable of the people that were there or, or nothing illegal that partook when the, this was happening. But according to Ryan Garcia, he has absolute proof of the you know some of the disgusting things that he was mentioning that were kind of happening when when he was uh, abducted or invited into into this place. So yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, that's sort of like a uh, one of the weird, strange news that I've been following. And uh, yeah, it looks like something's going to happen. Now, the, the, the thing also is that Ryan Garcia is currently training for a fight on April 20th. So he has gone a little bit uh, rogue because he's preparing for a huge fight. And um, he's been posting that in in his social media that now he wants to focus on the fight and who knows if he's going to release the videos now it's kind of weird that people have access to these videos and they kind of hold on to them you know that's the only thing that kind of throws me off a little bit if you had if you have any kind of video proof of anything going on 
wouldn't you want to release it right away? What's the point of hoarding onto it, you know, uh, and teasing it out? You know, so that that kind of sometimes I don't know if it's attention getting, or they just want to hype things up. But 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 if you see uh, crimes being committed, especially the ones that describe by Ryan Garcia being committed against uh, people, then the video should be released right away. And that that's kind of always the case when it comes to people obtaining footage and videos. They always say, "Oh, I'm gonna release it at a later date," or or sometimes they they mention situations that they've been in, but they don't dis- disclose to us who the perpetrators are. Like there's a, another video making the rounds on social media about uh, this comedian. His name is, escapes me right now, but basically he said that uh, he was offered the chance to uh, to be big, quote unquote. I mean, he's a popular. Uh, comedian but uh, he said that he was offered a, a chance to be bigger if you will but he had to perform some unpleasant acts and he said that he would would not do it and he walked out of this set meeting but he also said that there was another uh, there was an actor uh, in the same meeting in the same room when uh, they they were offered to perform uh, this sort of um, act if you will And uh, obviously he said that he walked away from it, but he said that the actor went ahead and and performed the acts that was required of them. But he, he mentioned the actor by name, you know, but he didn't mention the people, the the individuals that were in power of the meeting. So why would you, if you're going to disclose something like that, why wouldn't why would you protect the perpetrators again and you disclose the, the victim that doesn't make any sense for me you would always want people to know who the heck's been wanting to to have these things performed on them instead of you know telling us about the people performing the act so the, these things always kind of rub me the the wrong way in regards to how things are disclosed but anyways we live in a fallen world and a weird world and we have to consider that um there's always there's always uh two sides to a story and uh, yeah people use uh, personal experience or negative experiences for personal clout you know and sort of then nothing really materializes now uh, i could be wrong and a lot of things can materialize from both of these cases right but um, we'll just see what happens with that. Um, so Rafa Marquez comments. Uh, he also he also says he got real alien pictures. Yeah, so he's now he's saying that he got pictures of aliens. <clears throat> the thing with okay, so th- this is the thing with with disclosure now, as opposed to like 10, 20 years ago. When it comes to anything that has to do with disclosure or pictures. Um, it's harder now to kind of prove something as being real because there's just so much crazy software that is coming out that, you know, back in the day when somebody showed you a picture of something that was unbelievable, you would say, oh yeah, that's Photoshop. But now we have AI and sometimes it's it's very hard to distinguish reality from, from AI. So how do we know the truth? especially with photographs and now, you know, and even with video, you have all the deep, you know, you have the deep fake videos and then soon enough, the, 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 there's a program by the same company that um, produces uh, chat GPT, open AI, I believe they're called. Uh, they, they're the ones who produce the chat GPT program that they're coming out with. A, with so chat GPT is a, is a text, uh, text to knowledge i would say the output is knowledge you enter you know give me a brief summary of the 1955 world series and then within seconds you have a perfect summary uh, so that's a text to knowledge you, uh, you input text and then you get knowledge back then you have text you have text to image so you have your uh, your other programs that you will type for example create a picture of such and such and then it will, it will you input text and you get a picture back. Well, now they're coming up with a program called Sora, S-O-R-A, in which this particular program will be text to video. So you would input, uh, give me a video of uh, a dog walking in the snow. 
and within seconds you'll have a, a video that looks i mean it's if you haven't seen the pictures of sora it's amazing the the quiet it's you can it's hard for you to distinguish reality from this kind of video so that's going to open up the gateway for a lot of misleading uh, and then you won't be able in the future to tell whether something is real or not. And that's the thing about disclosure and the timing for it, if, if, if they will disclose it, that it needs to be done in a way that is still the, able to be analyzed and not dismissed as simply computer generated. So, you know, the farther away we get from, 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 from disclosing these things, the harder it will be to, to see if it's truth or not. <laughs> So for all you know, in a couple of years, they'll disclose everything and then people will believe it because they're, oh, it's probably fake, you know? So that's, it's a, it's like a catch 22, if you will. <clears throat> uh, other than that, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy uh, how, I, I don't know if you guys, what do you guys use for, for technology wise, if you guys have used any of these programs, but they're, they're pretty, they're pretty interesting. There was, there's one that I'm kind of waiting for that it's the same sort of uh, it's it's text to video, but the the good thing about it is that you're able to to keep the same character. Let me explain what that means. So when you use uh, one of these programs that you input text and you get an image back, let's say you say a girl in her twenties carrying flowers. And so the computer will, the program will generate a picture of a girl carrying flowers, and then it'll be very distinct the way that she looks like. And then, but you can't reuse her face again for you to kind of create a storyboard, if you will. So if you say now the girl, same girl is walking down the street, then you'll get a, a girl similar, but you won't get the same facial features. But this new program is able to kind of, you're able to create characters and the same characters are going to remain consistent. So you'll put an image of a character, uh, let's say Mickey Mouse, quote unquote. So you know what Mickey Mouse looks like. <clears throat> He'll be one character. And then regardless of how you prompt the video, <clears throat> excuse me, regardless of how you prompt the video to create, then it'll always be Mickey Mouse, if you will, which the, the, the ability of the programs now that don't have that. So you'll be able to create a whole movie, if you will, with this new software that's coming up so you can create a five minute movie a 10 minute movie you can you know create it uh cartoon like you can create it uh 1940s black and white you can create it uh, uh, the possibilities are endless and you can move around the frame so you can pretty much make your own movie which is amazing the quality is just uh, incredible so you'll be able to kind of be your own director your own writer uh, your own editor uh, and this thing is coming. It's it's coming out soon. It's right now they're taking. It's probably in beta testing, and I make sure that when I first heard about it, I, I signed up because it will be very cool, very cool, very cool for us to be able to to do something like that. I've always envisioned um, making some kind of movie, not long, not. Uh, long length but uh you know like a five minute flick which would be kind of cool and, and i think a lot of people that have good imagination but uh they lack the means of affording this expensive software will be able to create cool stuff as they do now if you if you go to um but you know if you, if you go to some of this uh, websites where they have uh, galleries of people that are creating um, pictures from with AI, with AI then it kind of loses a little bit the artistic value because you know these computers can generate thousands of images within an hour and uh, the quality is phenomenal so for the real artist that takes a month to create something like that they'll 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 you know some of that will be lost if you will and according to what i've read is in the, the future people are going to be hired as pro uh, programmers uh, slash prompters so I'll be like a new profession in the future. You'll be a professional prompter, and prompter uh, prompting is what you how you enter the information into the AI, so they can give you a result that you want, which is very interesting because um, 
you know, anybody can use this these types of programs. And it doesn't require a lot of ability, but the, the the more the better you are at prompting it, the better results you get. So there's a lot of cheat uh, like cheat sheets out there that tells you like, for example, the angles that you want to use, the lightning, the lighting of the picture, the colors that you want. So you know, for for a casual user, you only scratch the surface of how these programs are. But if you're like a prompter. Uh, you can make uh, mar marbles come out, and that's what uh, they were saying that the, the new "quote unquote" professionals will be like professional prompters. So you'll be hired by a studio somewhere, and your job will be solemnly to in input information in a way that gets the best results. So you'll be able to work like for movie companies, or you know, you'll be able to work for whatever. Um, and so you won't be the person there physically, hands-on creating this stuff. With a computer program but you'll be the one telling the computer how to create it. and i think that's fascinating and as technology uh, grows right as technology grows and, and programs get bigger there's always a conflict of the people that because if you if you think about it it'll put a lot of people out of work people that have you know that have a lot of personal uh skill in, in creating and programming and shooting a movie that'll put them out of work because the computer can do it more effectively, cheaper. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's part of like what happens when technology comes about. And uh, there's always people that don't want a technology to move in a certain direction because obviously they put their job and their skill at risk. So uh, back in the old times, people would, you know, when the phone came out, I'm sure there was a lot of people that were against the phone when the, um, you know, the internet came out, people in print media, because now if you think about it, who, who actually buys a newspaper? Nobody really buys newspapers. So these are all industries that kind of are, are become dinosaurs, you know, industries that no longer are able to do what they do. But that's the way that things evolve, if you will, as far as technology. And, and it, it is sort of uh, bad in a way, but it is sort of good because you're still creating jobs just for a different type of skill set. Um, so yeah, that's some of, some of the things that I've been kind of researching, quote unquote, uh, or I've been exposed to in the, in the news. I tend to cruise the news a lot during the day. Um, especially I use X a lot, X, X Twitter. Uh, I like, I like that because you're able to follow who you like and you're able to get kind of like the news that you want to get right away. So I intend to enjoy that. Um... So yeah, that's kind of it in a nutshell, if you will. And I am—I don't know if you guys follow uh, us on social media, I, in uh, Twitter or X. I'm under Jesus Codex. That's where I kind of carry all my stuff for the Strange Days Live. I just kind of chose that uh, name, and I—I I liked it. So Jesus, and then Codex, C-O-D-E-X. If you want to follow me on that profile on Twitter, otherwise we're also in Instagram, uh, Strange Days Live. And we are on, uh, oh, you know what? Why don't you guys friend me? Um, and I want you guys to friend me on, uh, the, I created a Facebook profile, not a group, but a profile that I, it's applicable for, for the show itself. And I've been getting a lot of cool friend requests from people that listen to the show and also people that I've interviewed in the show. So it's kind of like a, like a central, like a, um, central station if you will of contacts so I'll, let me put it here so i want to be able for you guys to be able to enjoy it and join it and be able to to come in and friend me a lot a lot of people don't have you guys don't have because you're too cool <laughs> no, i'm just kidding but a lot of people don't have facebook anymore but i i still use it i i funny i use it to i use it to do a lot of my shopping if you will the, the marketplace my personal account i use it to buy buy and sell a lot of things and um we'll keep you know keep in touch with loved ones <clears throat> the older older generation you know uncle aunts friends cousins but this particular facebook group here if you go to facebook.com you go forward slash put strange days paranormal it'll take you to my my new uh account that i just created sort of like a personal account for you guys to join me and it's cool because you guys you can get a hold of me right away because I'm, I'm always on it i have it always on in the background 
if you go to uh yeah so facebook.com forward slash strange days paranormal it'll bring you into my facebook um account and friend me so that way we can keep in touch uh what else things have been going well we have interviews a lot of interviews actually lined up for for next week or like two or three interviews and then and then when um with the new change in our timeline in the timeline with with changes to our um to our show it's going to be interesting because i'll probably you know i'll do i will have to do two shows a day and one of them that's going to come in probably around eight seven o'clock or seven or eight it'll be like an interview and then i'll sign off and then i'll pick off and i'll pick up again at 9 uh, 30 30 ish to do to pick up the pick up the the listeners from miedo school so that's that's where i'm that's what the state of the show is right now okay uh all right guys so i'm gonna kind of I'm going to sign off and um, I'll keep you on the loop. So tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to talk to my friend at Miedoscope to try to orchestrate the transition to be uh, better. So that way we can get right. As soon as the show ends, my show will be on and then I can get all the English speakers to come in here and we can do the call-ins. And, but good things are coming. I'm excited. And we also look out for the in-person show that will be happening in the Southern California area in July of this year, June, July of this year, me and, uh, and uh, me, we'll go, we're going to get uh, a space together. We're going to do a live show, which will be super cool. It'll be Spanish and English, all, all, all nice and, and mixed up. So as always, thank you guys. God bless you. Uh, keep on uh, listening and helping uh, promote the show. And um, tomorrow we'll be able to to, to get together. Uh, I'll be 9.30-ish Pacific. And then on Monday, we have uh, a guest. So we'll probably have two shows that day. Well, I'll keep you guys uh, posted. Follow me on Facebook. I'll keep everything updated on Facebook, okay? Well, God bless you guys. Have a great night. And thank you for being faithful listeners.